Just a Kiss, Chapter 18 A Miraculous Ladybug Fanfiction Written and Narrated by Mira Rose If you haven't heard the previous 17 parts of this story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video to help support the YouTube algorithm and the writer herself. Now then, if you don't know what to comment, put, it wouldn't hurt. Now then, please enjoy Just a Kiss, Chapter 18. Chloe Bourgeois Well, this is embarrassing. Chloe woke up warm and under a blanket that hadn't been there earlier. What time was it anyway? The sun had already set and, in this need to dispose of wires and minimalist aesthetic, her room didn't have any clocks. She looked around for her phone, only to realize, at the cost of a painful heartbeat, she'd fallen asleep on Nathaniel. Well, more like curled into Nathaniel. She felt her face burn, grateful he hadn't stirred at her sudden jolt backward. He sat there peacefully, lit by the city light filtering through the window, softly accenting his features. To think, she used to tease this boy for being ugly. She was sure if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't visit the barber every two weeks like clockwork, but Chloe didn't know if it were for the best. These feelings and these moments made her want to undo every trash move and word she'd ever sent his way. This was nothing like her middle school obsession for Adrian. This was, well, kissing him just this once wouldn't hurt, right? Wait, no! What are you thinking? You are Chloe Bourgeois. You're above such actions. But his forehead was right there, and so were his lips. Just one kiss wouldn't hurt, would it? Chloe leaned in her heart protesting as her nerves came to life, winding her arms as tight as her chest. Close? Closer? Oh, honeycombs, was she going to... Nothing. Nothing in her life had ever shocked her as much as Nathaniel opening his eyes in that moment. His eyes, a different blue than her own, pierced through the moment like electricity, and Chloe withdrew herself with such force she may as well have given a CPR compression to his chest. He made a gagging sound as she pushed herself off of him, but she wasn't emotionally stable enough to care. Turning away with pink cheeks, Chloe tried fanning herself as nonchalantly as possible. I didn't realize you were that desperate for some cuddles, Chloe said her back to him as she tried to pass the situation off as his own creation. How could I refuse a blonde beauty? He joked, rubbing his face awake. The face she'd just tried to kiss. Hark, no. She wasn't that type of girl. She didn't need to pine after a growing man-boy. Chloe watched his face twist from sleepy to stoned as he sat up straight, both hands going to his phone instead of holding it with one hand. "'What's up?' she asked, too curious about his change in attitude to remain nonchalant. "'Remember that webtoon?' "'Oh, darling, how could I forget Empress Honeycomb in all her bourgeois glory?' She teased, a grin already perched upon her face. Somebody's trying to sue me over it. Her grin snapped off as her body snapped straight. Excuse me? She answered. Attention, Mr. Kurtzberg, Nathaniel began, and Chloe felt her stomach drop. It has come to our attention that the work The Empress and Her Duke you've published on social media is a direct copyright violation of our client. 
Regal Publishing Incorporated. All copyrightable aspects of Regal Publishing Inc. are copyrighted under French copyright law? <laughs> what? Chloe scoffed. I watched you draw that comic myself. Nathaniel, face pale, kept reading. We have copies of your unlawful copies to preserve as evidence. Your actions constitute copyright infringement. Under French law, the consequences of copyright infringement include statutory damages of and between 750 and 30,000 euros per work at the discretion of the court and damages of up to 150,000 euros per work for willful inf infringement? Still listening, Chloe punched numbers into her phone, a new kind of rage in her belly. She'd never gone Mother Bear for anyone before, but now she knew what people meant when they used that term. No way they're getting away with this, she muttered. If you continue to engage in copyright infringement after receiving this letter, Nathaniel continued, his voice low, your actions will be evident of willful infringement and- Stop! Chloe barked, the line ringing. Yes, hello? Chloe, what are you- His hands were shaking. Yes, Daddy, hi. Send me your lawyer. She clicked her tongue as her father rattled off questions. No, it's for a friend. Suing? Yes, of course I'm going to sue. Do you think I'm going to let my friend go through an emotional crisis like this? Chloe. Nathaniel cut in, his hand on her shoulder. If anyone comes at my things, I will burn them to the ground. She all but yelled into her phone. Send me him now. Chloe tossed her phone into an armchair opposite her and sighed, the exhale mixed with a growl, before she looked up to see Nathaniel looking at her slack-jawed. Chloe, he began. What? she snapped. You... He swallowed and looked away. I didn't realize you would... Uh... Just spit it out, tomato head. A smile twitched at his lips unable to break through under his newfound stress. I just didn't think, um, uh, I didn't think you'd ever let yourself get that upset for, um, well, my sake. She stared, dumbfounded, as he ran his hands through his hair. Excuse me? What? He glanced over, and she could tell he meant it. We're partners, you oaf! Chloe pushed him with her foot, and nobody touches my things. I don't think I've ever been so grateful to have been bullied in high school. She rolled her eyes. You think that was me mad? Please, you haven't seen anything yet. Nathaniel laughed, and, and Chloe felt one of many knots in her back begin to unwind. I'm counting on you, then. Of course. She lifted her chin and crossed her arms. You don't have any other choice. His laugh turned from a chuckle to something that echoed across the room. She couldn't help but join in. All things considered, they were about to enter an exhausting chapter, but Chloe didn't mind it. She could help him. For the first time in their relationship... Chloe could be a catalyst for good, no matter how she got the results for this young man. Okay, yeah. Chloe would destroy anything and everything if it meant clearing a path for Nathaniel Kurtzberg. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 19 is on the way. In the meantime, check out other videos on this channel for more fanfiction. And don't forget, you can get first access to my videos and scripts by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com backslash Mira Writes. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!